What if the Jedi Council wanted Anakin to be trained in the Phantom Menace? That's our story for today. It's a story idea that I got from an email. I always I love when you guys are commenting or just emailing video ideas, so it's where I get a lot of inspiration from. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for checking this one out. And of course, check the pinned comment for the 60,000 subscriber lightsaber giveaway, which we're quickly approaching. Thanks, and let's get right into it. Our story begins just a few months before the blockade of Naboo and the Sith revealing themselves to the Jedi, as Darth Plagueis and his apprentice Darth Sidious are using Sith alchemy to try and see the future. They're using an ancient power that requires maximum strength of two dark side warriors, putting their minds together, pouring their life energies into the cauldron, trying to get a glimpse of the future of the Sith. This technique took a toll that would take weeks to recover from, but the Sith thought it to be worth it, as their plans were in motion. As they poured their energies into the alchemy, the Sith were soon granted a vision, but the vision was not of either of them. Instead, they saw a boy, roughly 20 years old, and he shifted from having long hair and a gentle smile, to immediately having yellow eyes, swinging a blue lightsaber at countless Jedi, unable to defend themselves. And then, the breathing began. Loud, heavy, mechanical breathing, followed by laughter that Sidious recognized to be his own, but he didn't think Plagueis recognized this laughter. And both Plagueis and Sidious would stumble backwards, realizing now that the future of the Sith was in a boy that they did not yet know. But what these two Sith also did not know in this moment was that Grandmaster Yoda was able to feel these dark, swirling energies, and he called the Jedi Council into session to meditate on them, find out what was going on. So the entire Council gathered, setting up in the middle of the chamber, searching into the Force, and they, too, were granted a vision of the future. There was a dark shadow swirling around, saying that the Jedi die and the Sith rise to rule the galaxy. But from the other side of the room, a beaming figure of light ignited a blue lightsaber, striking the shadow down, and whispers filled the air, whispers of the prophecy of the Chosen One. So both the Jedi and the Sith had different visions, both of them realizing just how important this young boy, yet to be discovered, will truly be. And Yoda vowed that when this Chosen One is found, the Jedi will adjust their ways to survive the revenge of the Sith. And now we fast forward a handful of months back to the Jedi Temple. Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn is standing in front of the Council after bringing Queen Amidala away from Naboo. But he tells the Council he has made a discovery. A boy from Tatooine with a midichlorian count that exceeds even Master Yoda himself. And Qui-Gon told the Council that he suspects this boy is the Chosen One. The Council began murmuring, looking to each other as Yoda closed his eyes. The future was uncertain. Darkness clouded his vision, but he did not know where this darkness resided from. But he knew how important this boy could be if he truly was the Chosen One. So Anakin was brought before the Council and tested to see if he had a baseline in the Force. And of course, Anakin was great with the initial tests, but the Council sensed much fear in him. Yoda thought to himself, that he would never let this boy be trained without the vision that he had months ago. But today, he went against his better judgment, giving Anakin a kind smile, saying that he will be trained. Anakin lit up with joy. He was extremely nervous to meet these Jedi, but being met with kindness made him very happy. And Yoda told Qui-Gon the two of them have a ton to discuss. So the Naboo mission to deal with the Trade Federation and protect Queen Amidala will be reassigned to Mace Windu, Saezy Tin, and Aegon Kolar. Yoda would take Qui-Gon aside while Obi-Wan began giving Anakin a tour of the temple, and Yoda asked Qui-Gon's advice about how they should go about training the boy. Qui-Gon told Yoda this was no ordinary Jedi training, and they should not treat it as such. The boy has formed unbreakable attachments to his mother, and it was in his nature to form attachments with anyone close to him. Qui-Gon said he suspects that Anakin was already attached to him and possibly to Padme Amidala. Yoda shook his head. He was nervous about this. He sensed much fear, deep anger in the young boy. But Qui-Gon asked what the alternative is. Send him back into slavery? Wait for the Sith to find him instead? Qui-Gon urged Yoda that the Jedi need to take this opportunity, and he laid out a plan for Anakin to be trained. This must feel more like a familial setting than a newly forced lifestyle. It cannot feel anything like the slavery. He must feel welcomed, comfortable, safe. He needs a motherly master, a fatherly master, and the Grand Master must support him. Yoda agreed, and it was decided that Yoda, Qui-Gon, and Shaak-Ti would split training duties between them. 
the mission to Naboo, led by Windu, Kolar, and Tin, would see Seizi Tin eventually take to the air, taking on the Trade Federation battleships, while Agen Kolar was aided by the Gungans in a battlefield against the droids, and Mace Windu would take on Darth Maul himself. All three of the Jedi would win their respective battles, with Mace getting Maul to surrender on the ledge, but upon losing, Maul knew that failure was unacceptable, so he told Windu there were things far scarier than death, before allowing himself to fall off the ledge into a plasma pit, dying quickly to avoid the wrath of Sidious. Naboo was freed, but the seeds were sown for conflict in the galaxy, and Sidious finally killed his master Plagueis. Now, after the events of Naboo, he found out about the young Skywalker, and knew he would be able to exploit his early life to turn him to the dark side all in due time. But Palpatine quickly learned it would not be as easy as he initially hoped. Qui-Gon Jinn was alive, and his intel from the Jedi Temple was that Anakin was being trained by not only Qui-Gon, but also Shaak Ti and Yoda himself. So Palpatine came up with a plan for Dooku, his new apprentice. Dooku would visit the temple very often, form a relationship with Anakin, and in time, hopefully that relationship would be exploited for him to join the dark side. Palpatine knew that Anakin was the future of the Sith. He would not be denied. So from here, the training of Skywalker would truly begin. The first meeting between Anakin and Shakti was very pleasant. She took this new opportunity with open arms. She could feel Anakin through the Force, feeling that he needs real connections, not just Jedi training. And Shakti's compassion was perfect for this. In the first year of his training, Anakin Skywalker connected more and more with Qui-Gon, who became a true fatherly figure to him that he never really had. Qui-Gon recognized Anakin's raw talent, nurtured it with patience and understanding. He taught Anakin not only the ways of the Force, and soon began lightsaber combat, but the importance of self-discipline, humility, and Anakin would flourish under Qui-Gon's mentorship, developing a truly strong bond with his master, as he learned to channel his emotions into strength, rather than hide from them, succumb to them, fear them. He must use them in the light. Shakti and Yoda were certainly involved with this all, but T would become much more of a lead after the first year. She would join Anakin's training as his second master, embodying the motherly figure for the young Padawan, and Shakti's serene presence, nurturing guidance, complemented Qui-Gon's teachings perfectly. She helped Anakin cultivate compassion and empathy, emphasizing the Jedi Code's principles of peace and harmony. Shakti also focused on Anakin's physical conditioning, combat skills, pushing him to excel in various lightsaber forms and techniques. And under her watchful eye, Anakin learned to balance his inner turmoil with his sense of inner peace, laying the groundwork for his growth as a Jedi. Together, Qui-Gon, Shakti, and Anakin would travel to Tatooine, finally freeing Shmi and giving her a home on Coruscant. It was safe, she was happy, and Anakin would often be able to visit her. Yoda's involvement in Anakin's training would become much more prominent in the third year, as the Grand Master took on the role of a tough love mentor. Yoda recognized Anakin's potential, but also saw the darkness that lurked within him. With his characteristic bluntness and wisdom, Yoda challenged Anakin to confront his fears and his insecurities, pushing him beyond his limits, unlocking his true potential. They would travel to Ilum, to Dagobah, and other ancient temples, where Anakin would have to confront himself, and Anakin would eventually emerge stronger for it. The combined influence of Qui-Gon, Shakti, and Yoda continued shaping Anakin into a great Jedi. Qui-Gon's fatherly guidance, Shakti's nurturing presence, Yoda's tough love provided Anakin with a well-rounded and balanced approach to his training. Together, they would help him overcome his inner demons and his insecurities, the darkness that would always be inside of him, guiding Anakin to a deeper understanding of the Force and his role within it. And at around age 16, Anakin's training had progressed extremely well, but not without a dark influence. Because the Jedi provided Anakin with what he needed emotionally, he never had to form a connection to Chancellor Palpatine. Anakin had very little interest in politics, and instead, he saw the Republic as a bunch of elites that don't truly care for the people of the galaxy. This included Palpatine, but this was also because of Dooku. While former Jedi Master Dooku was building a secret Separatist alliance in the galaxy, he was also often visiting the temple to check in and put seeds of doubt in Anakin's mind. Dooku, under Palpatine's instruction, was trying to get Anakin to see just how broken and evil the Republic really was, so that when the Clone Wars begin and the Jedi join, Anakin will be filled with conflict that can then be exploited. 
So for a couple more years, as the Jedi trained Anakin, and Dooku continued to tell him just how terrible the Republic truly is, Anakin would become much more powerful. With only Obi-Wan training him, and never having the true trust of the Council in the original timeline, Anakin grew up knowing that he had power, but he feared this power. Now, in this timeline, Anakin was encouraged to use his power for good. He learned how to be the Chosen One, without fearing that if he gives in to his power, then he will go down a path that he can never return from. It would not be used for darkness, his power would be used for good. Yoda, Qui-Gon, and Shakti would allow Anakin to just be himself much more, while staying in the constraints of the light side. And Anakin flourished up until the conflict with the Separatists and the Republic reached a breaking point, and the Jedi learned that Dooku was secretly in control of the Separatist Alliance. A war would begin, but as it did, the trio of Qui-Gon, Shakti, and Yoda had extensive discussions with the Jedi Council about their role in the war. Qui-Gon now had a council seat along with Shakti, and after many long talks, the two of them were the leading voices that would convince the council that it is not their war to fight. Yes, they have sworn to protect the Republic, but what they are not seeing is that the Separatists are also part of the Republic they have sworn to protect. Only they have broken off for reasons the Jedi need to try harder to understand. Ironically, one of the main reasons the Jedi altogether never joined the war was because of Dooku's influence on Anakin. As Anakin slowly learned more and more about how bad the Republic has become, he would often talk to Qui-Gon and Shakti about it, and now those two Jedi Masters convinced the Council to stay neutral. They could provide aid and refugee help, but they would not fight a war. Palpatine hated this, but when he found out, he couldn't exactly order the Jedi into war, so instead, he subtly began spreading propaganda about how the Jedi were traitors to the Republic, refusing to fight for the people. But for a lot of citizens, actions would speak louder than words, and the actions of the Jedi quickly would become noble instead of like warriors. The Jedi would actually meet with Duchess Satine of Mandalore. She would allow them to help lead the Council of Neutral Systems. This was a large collection of planets, including Mandalore, Scipio, Caedonomoidia, that were initially neutral in the war and the Jedi would be stationed on these planets with medical aid, safe camps away from the fighting for anyone affected by the war. One of these camps would be led by now Jedi Knight, Anakin Skywalker, and he was happy with his role. The Clone War was affecting trillions across the galaxy, but instead of fighting, he worked with the Jedi and the neutral systems to talk to senators that could be trusted to help bring peace. Through the first year of the war, Palpatine continued to urge the Jedi to get involved, to help the people of the Republic, but time and time again, they would simply refuse. The clone army would take on the droids in countless battles that the people of the galaxy would see only as pointless bloodshed. Palpatine knew that it was not long before the Jedi worked with senators to end this war abruptly. It may have happened already if it weren't for Palpatine's intervention on both sides, but he knew something drastic had to change. They needed Anakin in the war. So he and Dooku would come up with a new plan. Dooku would draw Anakin and his two masters into a trap. They would be killed in front of him by Dooku and Grievous. Anakin will be filled with rage, and then he will have no choice but to follow his crusade into the Clone War, as he finds the darkness within himself. So a few days later, as Anakin, Qui-Gon, and Shakti were reunited on Scipio, the Council contacted them with urgent news. The ship that Master sifo Dias was on when he died had its signal reactivated, and it is being traced to the Scipio moon. So Yoda and Windu asked these three Jedi to check it out. They agreed to do this, and Yoda warned them that it could be a trap, so be weary. On the Scipio moon, Anakin, Shakti, and Qui-Gon would travel through the cold, snowy air, finding the crashed ship of sifo Dias. Dooku took this ship from the moon of Obadiah, and he planted it here, activating the signal to draw the Jedi into it. And as the three Jedi reached the ship and began approaching, Qui-Gon told Anakin to be ready. He senses something dark here. And a second later, the ship they approached suddenly exploded, sending all three of the Jedi flying backwards, extremely dazed, somewhat burned from the explosion. Anakin felt his vision going dark, and he saw a speeder fly into view. He tried desperately to get back up, but as he did, he was hit hard with force lightning, falling back down to the ground. And Anakin looked up again to see Grievous and Dooku. In the past, he'd trusted Dooku, but he saw now just how wrong he was to do this. Dooku lifted Qui-Gon with a force choke, while Grievous lifted Shakti into the air. 
and Dooku called out to Anakin, telling him it's time to show the power of the Chosen One, give in to the dark side that calls to him. Anakin got back to his feet, telling Dooku he was not weak like him. He will never join the dark side. Dooku told Anakin that he will have to draw it out of him then, and he turned to Qui-Gon, apologizing to his old friend. And Dooku genuinely regretted what he had to do now, but he knew this was for the greater good of the galaxy, igniting his red blade through the guts of Qui-Gon as Grievous laughed, doing the same to shock T. Both Grievous and Dooku ripped through the Jedi, killing them instantly, as Anakin screamed out in horror, reaching out his hands, hitting Dooku and Grievous with a massive force push. Both of them flew through the air, recovering to see a slight shift in Anakin as he ignited his blue saber, saying that this ends now. Dooku said this was good. He knew he could take Anakin into this state. His anger would unbalance him, as he didn't know how to truly use it, and he had Grievous by his side. But as Anakin marched at the two of them, two voices in his head made him suddenly stop. Qui-Gon and Shakti spoke to Anakin now, telling him to trust in the Force, remember his training, trust in the light. And Anakin stopped now, taking a deep breath, and he threw his own lightsaber away, before calling both Shock T and Qui-Gon sabers to his hands. He would end this today, but he would do it as a Jedi. And with two lightsabers ignited, Anakin would launch himself at Dooku and Grievous, aided by the presences of Qui-Gon and Shock T in the Force Netherworld watching over him. Dooku, with his elegant yet malevolent style, and Grievous with his mechanical movements, would fight well against Anakin. But Anakin was trained to perfection by the Jedi, meeting their attacks with a great force. And against Dooku's calculated strikes, Anakin would counter with a whirlwind of aggression, balanced by the serenity of his training. With each parry, he thought of the patience of Qui-Gon. With each strike, he thought of the determination of Shock T. As Grievous moved in for a strike, Anakin would flip over him, flipping around in the air, throwing a saber at him. Grievous turned as the green saber sliced through his gut, and with a surprised cough, he fell in half, dead. And now Dooku looked to Anakin, saying this was very impressive but Grievous was an unbalanced monstrosity. Now it is time for him to defeat a true foe. And Anakin circled Dooku, memories of their good times together coming back, but Anakin knew Dooku was lost. Once the war started, the dark side infected Dooku like an incurable virus. And Anakin was determined to avenge the man that Dooku once was, running back in with two sabers. Anakin swung with immense speed, as Dooku was ready, parrying each blow again and again, but he underestimated Anakin. Through the years of trust and belief in the Jedi, Anakin became who he was always supposed to be, and the two of them battled up to the ledge of a mountain. Anakin spun and flipped as Dooku struggled to stay with the young Jedi. They eventually got to the ledge of the mountain. Dooku overstepped an attack, allowing Anakin to quickly slice through the ground. The mountain began to break, and as Dooku struggled to climb back up, Anakin reached out, hitting Dooku with a force push and he fell far down the mountains to his certain death. Anakin would go on to recover the bodies of his fallen masters, but first he investigated Dooku's ship for recent destination logs, and one of the most frequent ones was Coruscant. This was curious, and so Anakin brought the ship to the temple, and upon arrival, the two bodies were brought to the temple tombs, while Yoda, Kenobi, and Windu investigated Dooku's ship, finding the same destination logs that Anakin described, and so they rounded up a crew of Jedi to go investigate. With them, the Jedi also had a battalion of clones sent into the industrial sector. While the Jedi didn't have authorization to lead the clones, they heard that Anakin killed Dooku and Grievous, and this new lead could lead the war to end. And so they searched the sector, while the Jedi squad of Anakin, Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Windu would travel to the coordinates in Dooku's ship, entering into an eerie building where a hooded man stood waiting as the ramp descended. Darth Sidious sensed something went wrong with Dooku in the Force, so he waited here to see if he would arrive. And when his ship entered, Sidious felt only a second of relief before the four Jedi exited, telling this man to surrender. Sidious was going to try to run, he still had so much more to do, but through the back entrance, clones began pouring out of it. Palpatine realized he was heavily outmatched, but he had an idea. He could execute Order 66, he could sense the Jedi approaching, but he knew they wouldn't kill him without a fight. They would take him in. They would make him surrender. But as he turned to the clones and opened his mouth, Anakin's blue blade was stabbed through his spine. And Anakin said this was for his masters. Palpatine said that revenge is not the Jedi way, gasping as he fell to his knees. But Anakin didn't care right now. 
He saw what the Sith turned Dooku into. He knew they were too dangerous to be left alive. Yoda watched as Anakin did this, and Sidious died, but the Jedi felt some disappointment. Anakin killed the Sith Lord in revenge, but the Jedi knew that the Sith had to be eradicated. This was a dangerous, but necessary move from Anakin. And from here, the Jedi would aid the neutral systems in helping to quickly end the war upon the discovery that Palpatine was working with Dooku. It was a war that went all the way to the top, benefiting only the elites, and citizens around the galaxy were happy to help end this war. The clone squad that was in the Sith lair with the Jedi told the Senate that Palpatine was waiting for Dooku. Records showed that they worked together before, all the time. The war would end as the Separatists would negotiate with new Chancellor Padme Amidala about a peaceful re-entry into the Republic, with Dooku and Grievous gone. Anakin would continue living on through his fallen masters, as they were always with him, and he would soon be promoted to a Council Master after training Padawan Ahsoka Tano to knighthood after the war. Training Jedi gave Anakin peace, and he always aimed to make young Jedi feel welcomed, as he once felt welcomed by Qui-Gon and Shock T. Over the years, as Padme helped to reform the Republic, Anakin would continue to help make the Jedi better, and as a Council Master, he would have great influence for years to come, forming a great relationship with Padme that remained mostly professional, as they brought peace to a galaxy that needed Anakin and Padme working together. And folks, that is our story for today. Again, shout out, I was emailed this idea, and I wanted to roll with it, see where it went with my own inputs and such, so appreciate you guys sending me videos, ideas. It always helps, you know, the creativity flow. But yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's just a slight adjustment from what happens in The Phantom Menace, right? Because ultimately, Anakin is trained. But if in the council session where Mace Windu says that Anakin will not be trained, what if instead Yoda and Windu were like, you know what? He will be trained. I think things could change drastically, obviously because I made this video. I don't think Qui-Gon goes back to Naboo. I think Yoda would really want to, you know, talk to him about all of this. So, ultimately someone else goes to Naboo, defeats Maul. I think Windu versus Maul is not that competitive. Windu's perhaps the best duelist in the galaxy. So, there's that. Anyways, really wanted to go through it. I didn't have Anakin and Padme getting married. I think that if Anakin is just super focused on the Jedi and, like, gets the training he needs, he wouldn't ever need to have that of connection with Padme, so hope that made sense. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.